Hi everyone, it's Gemma, welcome back to Pampered Wolf. In this video, I am gonna be sharing with you my top tips on how to get flawless makeup every single time. So if you are interested in that, please do stick around to the end. If you are new here, hi, my name's Gemma. I upload two to three videos here on YouTube every single week, and I'm also on Instagram if you fancy checking me out over there. I would really appreciate it if you haven't done so already. Come and join the Pampered Wolf Pack by clicking on that subscribe button and also the notification bell so you don't miss any future uploads. Think I've said everything? Let's get on with it. So the first thing I'm gonna mention actually isn't one of my tips, but it should be. I mention this in every single one of my videos. So if you do watch every single one of my videos, firstly, thank you. Secondly, sorry for repeating myself. You need to be wearing a suitable sunscreen on a daily basis, rain or shine. That's SPF 30 or above, broad spectrum, protecting you against UVA and UVB damage. The reason I want to include that in this video is this will help you avoid or improve any pigmentation issues that you have on your skin. It will also help you avoid or improve the plethora of other issues that not protecting yourself from the sun can bring. Those fine lines, wrinkles, open pores, sagging skin, that sort of thing. So by avoiding these or improving these with a sunscreen, you will reap the benefits when you're applying your makeup and you will end up with a much more flawless look than you would do if you weren't protecting your skin at all. Next tip, dermaplaning, dermablading, shaving the face, however you want to describe it, I love it. I dermaplane at least once every three weeks. It just creates the smoothest canvas for my makeup to sit on. So this is removing the peach fuzz from the surface of the skin. Peach fuzz are those little hairs that grow from the face. This will give you the smoothest canvas. It will also help your skincare sink into the skin much, much faster. So the reason it does that is because your skincare isn't getting absorbed by the peach fuzz on the surface of the skin. It's actually getting to where it needs to go much, much faster. My makeup looks much more flawless after I've dermaplaned than it does when I've allowed all the hair to grow back on my face. And if you are female, this will not grow back thicker. Just putting that out there. If you are worried about that though, go and see a doctor before you start. Dermaplaning will also help remove the layer of dead skin cells on the surface of the skin. Now, if you go into a clinic to have this done, they will use more pressure on the surface of the skin and they will use very, very sharp scalpels to do this process. I don't use those at home and I also don't use as much pressure, so I'm not gonna get the maximum benefits out of that dead skin cell renewal. However, I am gonna get the major benefits out of removing that peach fuzz and creating the smooth canvas for my makeup to sit on top of. Next tip, acid exfoliation. If you are applying your makeup on top of dead skin cells, it's going to look nowhere near as fresh and as flawless as if you were applying it on top of beautiful, fresh skin. So make sure that you are doing acid exfoliation at least once or twice a week. If you can't use an acid exfoliator because your skin can't tolerate it, make sure you pick a physical exfoliator that's really gentle on the skin. Get rid of those dead skin cells. Your makeup will definitely thank you. If you have acne prone or blemish prone skin and you have a few breakouts on the face, make sure you're using a BHA to spot treat those areas. There's no need to use it all over the skin, but make sure you're using it morning and night to spot treat. Whatever you do, don't squeeze because you'll just dehydrate the area and makeup application will be really, really patchy and very, very difficult. So just spot treat those areas twice daily and you will definitely see an improvement much faster. Next tip, whatever you do, don't skip moisturizer. Your skin needs that moisturizer and it will make for a much smoother makeup application. Make sure you look after your skin, regardless of whether you have oily skin or dry skin, you should be using a moisturizer and there will be a moisturizer out there for you. If you have oily skin, go for something that's really light, more like a gel moisturizer. If you have dry skin, something slightly heavier but not too heavy for a day cream would be great great for you. This is such a key step to any sort of makeup application. If you're not applying a moisturizer, your makeup is going to go on much, much patchier. It's not gonna look as seamless or as flawless, so you mustn't skip that stage. I don't think I've ever had a makeup artist put makeup on my skin 
that has ever skipped the moisturizer phase. And my makeup lasts and looks more flawless for longer because I've prepped my skin. Next tip, further preparation, primers. Now I haven't always been huge fans of primers and I haven't always felt the need for a primer and that is absolutely fine if you feel the same way. But if you do have some problem areas on your skin that makeup just won't stick to, or you're feeling you've got a little bit of texture, those open pores, maybe you've got really oily skin, or maybe you've got quite dry skin and you want a more illuminated effect, there will be a primer for you, whether that be an illuminating primer, a mattifying primer, a pore filling primer, or just a smoothing primer. All those gripping primers that really stick the makeup to the skin and make it last all day. My tip for primers is use the primer where you need it. You don't need to use it all over the skin. So if you need a pore filling primer, only massage it into the area where you feel you need it. Really push it into the skin and massage it just over that area. If you then have a little bit of dry skin and you want to illuminate that part of the skin, you can apply that in the areas that you want to. And again, really push that into the skin to make sure you have it exactly where you want it. Again, you you don't need to use more than one, but you can if you want to. Next tip, colour correctors. I'm a huge fan of colour correctors. I feel like if you use a colour corrector, you need to use a lot less of other products, namely foundation or concealers, which will help your makeup look more flawless for much, much longer throughout the day. So if you have a lot of redness on your skin, a green colour corrector will help cancel that out. If you have a lot of blue on your skin, namely those under eye circles, an orange colour corrector will help cancel out the blueness or a peach colour corrector. If you have some purple discoloration, a yellow colour corrector will help cancel out that purple hue. There are a lot of colour correctors available. I highly recommend them. Like I said, if you use a colour corrector to cancel out that pigmentation, you're going to need less product over the top which will really help your makeup look more flawless. Now let's talk about under eye concealer. I always recommend that you go for a high coverage under eye concealer because the higher the coverage, the less product you need to use. And that under eye area is, you know, it's a pain in the neck, let's face it. This is a very movable area of skin that is prone to creasing. So the less product you apply to that under eye area, the better. Now, a lot of people think that you need an under eye concealer that's at least one to two shades fairer than your natural skin tone to add a brightening effect underneath the eye. And believe me, that can look absolutely beautiful on some people. However, if you have under eye bags, and I'm not talking about dark circles, I'm talking about bags, that puffiness underneath the eye that actually can be quite prominent. You do not want to be using a concealer that's fairer than your natural skin tone because anything that is brighter or lighter will help the area that you're actually applying that to look more prominent and protruded from the skin. And that is the last thing you want to be doing to conceal your under eye bags. So use something that's more your natural skin tone. You could even use something that's slightly deeper than your natural skin tone. I would only go slightly though, otherwise this can look quite unnatural. But that is definitely a huge tip from me. If you do have under eye bags, definitely stick to something that is more your natural skin tone rather than going fairer. So I try not to apply my under eye concealer all the way up to my lower lash line. I try and stop just a few millimeters underneath. I find that that really helps with the creasing problem, but also if I apply it all the way up to my lower lash line, my waterline tends to look a little bit irritated and red, and I want to avoid that at all costs. Another tip for concealer is if you're wanting quite a bit of coverage, but you're wanting to use less product, allow the product to sit on the skin for at least one to two minutes before you blend it out. That way the formula will thicken a little bit and you'll get better coverage with less product. Another tip for the under eyes, I always like to set my under eyes in place, but if you don't like to use a powder, use a setting spray. I like to apply my setting spray with the same sponge that I've blended out my concealer with. So just spray a little bit of setting spray onto that damp sponge and then apply it very gently underneath the eye. Very little pressure, just apply a tiny little bit and you'll find that your makeup doesn't budge. 
I also tend not to like using powder over my skin. I like the natural glow that my skin produces throughout the day, but I don't like the fact that I lose the foundation on the tip of my chin and on my nose. So I use exactly the same trick. I spray my damp blending sponge with the setting spray and just press that in place. It makes sure that my makeup doesn't move, but it doesn't mattify anything. If I want to use a setting spray all over my skin, if I really want my makeup to last for an extremely long amount of time, maybe I'm going to a wedding and I need my makeup to look fresh and flawless all day long, I like to spray the setting spray directly on my skin. Now you're obviously already going to have your eyes shut when you apply the setting spray all over your face. My top tip though is to keep your eyes shut for a little bit longer than you feel is necessary. Now the reason I say that, if you apply your products in the same order as me, you've probably already got mascara on your lashes. And the setting spray will slightly dampen off that mascara and what happens when you open your eyes when you've got damp mascara on your lashes, it transfers onto your upper lids and you want to stop that from happening. So make sure that your skin and your lashes are completely dry before you open your eyes. And my last tip in this video is always use a lip liner regardless of whether you're using a lipstick, a lip gloss or a lip balm. I never used to use a lip liner. I never used to feel it was necessary and it probably wasn't. But as I've got older, my lip line has become slightly fuzzier. And when I don't use a lip liner, everything just looks a little bit more unfinished. The edges aren't crisp, perfect, flawless. So now I always use a lip liner and everything just looks more polished. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful in some way. Do let me know what you've thought about it in the comment section below and also add your tips and tricks in the comment section and share your knowledge with the rest of the pack. Hope to see you all in the next video. Bye everyone.